all, happy Holi to both of you. Uh, coach, I'll come to you first, uh, and then Mr. Sumit, throwing the floor open for questions. Uh, coach, uh, uh, one point against Afghanistan in the previous match. What are you, uh, what are you expecting for tomorrow? Well, obviously, first of all, you see the smile on my face when I see so many of you here. <laughs> when we were five days back there in, in Saudi, there was no one in the, in the press room. So it's really nice to feel this atmosphere, this buzz here. And I appreciate you all being here. Uh, what to say? We were disappointed with the end results against Afghanistan in the first game. Obviously, I couldn't be happy with the performance. But uh, realistically, it's much more difficult to expect from our boys to shine after three days of work in such a long travel, you know. And I don't blame anyone. Uh, so we need to make things right here. We need to try to make things right here, and that's what we're going to try to do. How good is going to work, we're going to see. Uh, we'll do our best, definitely. And what I say to my players, nothing ends in tomorrow games. Because we are in a really good position, uh, holding the second spot in the group, which is taking us to the third round of the qualifiers, and the tomorrow result will not change nothing about that. The final date will come in June against Kuwait, most probably the game which will be played in Kolkata. So uh, I have seen many comments, many disappointments, many frustrations there. There shouldn't be any belief. Because we have proved so many times already that our team works perfectly when we have enough time to work together, to spend together. And I would love all of you to have a little bit more trust in all of you. Because it's been proven so many times. And whatever I said, it's been proven that it was the truth. Whenever we had these special situations for a long time, we shined so much that everybody was excited about Indian football. Everybody started trusting us and believing and having faith in whatever we do. But then, one poor result, everything disappears, everyone becomes negative. That doesn't help our players. I don't mind myself, but we are not helping our players in any way. So let's think about that a little bit. We are on the verge of making greatest success in Indian football history. And uh, I urge everyone there, help us do that. Do not uh, uh, bring barricades against this fantastic result which is ahead of us. So the boys will, who will come out tomorrow, they will do their best. I hope there will be a huge crowd here in Assam State, in Guwahati. Uh, we remember how well we played against Oman here, who is far better than Afghanistan, but that was a long time ago. You could clearly see in the first game that that Afghanistan team was not the team who played against Qatar and Kuwait. That was far better team because they had a long camp in Aba, three week camp prior to our game. They were working on the things, preparing the things and waiting on us there. So that's what long camp can change in one team, you know. So ranking means nothing. As I mentioned many times, you will remember how good we handled Australia for the 60 minutes and then receiving one silly goal which opened the score, which made it easier for, for Australia. So it's a clear sign that rankings are not helping you there on the pitch when you need to get the win. So uh, we are positive, we are looking forward to tomorrow's game and we're going to try to do our best. So. Uh, draw is the same as the loss for us. Draw and loss will mean that we need to beat Kuwait here in June. Uh, if we win the game, that means that the draw will be enough against Kuwait. So we try to do our best to make it easier for ourselves for the June. But I promised already and I told you, we're going to take India together to the third round of the qualifiers. Our team is going to fly in June for the game against Kuwait and Qatar. But tomorrow, we're going to do everything possible to get away. Thank you. Uh, coming to Captain Sunil Chetri, obviously everyone here knows uh, you're, you'll be playing your 150th international tomorrow. Please tell us about how special an occasion it is for you. Yeah, I got known happy birthday to everyone and your family. Uh, thank you for the 150th game. Uh, I the honor and privilege. And after this, let's not make anything about this. Let's only talk about Afghanistan and India. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, yeah. 
I just wanted to ask you that the last time uh, Skipper started with the Vikram Pratap in the front, which is generally a change from how you set up your team. You don't really have two strikers. You have, let's say, uh, you don't have Ashik right now, you don't have Sahal. But what I'm trying to say is that goal scoring is becoming a problem for us, at least in the short span. Do you think that is a combination that you are going to pursue? If not Vikram, maybe somebody else. And that is how probably, if not just for this next game, Afghanistan, but going forward, probably a sort of setup maybe which can help us to get more goals if if the creativity isn't really coming through from the midfield. Yeah. Listen, the scoring problem has been hunting us for five years. Even before I came here, the scoring problem was hunting us. And I will not repeat myself saying about mentioning the problems which we have in the competitions in the leagues, uh, in the foreign players are playing these most important important positions and all that. That is obviously working us. Against Afghanistan, we had the West Indian striking force up front. We also had uh, several chances which we could execute if Monday score goal there at the 15th minute, I think, uh, in the first half, then the game would change drastically. We, we didn't score and the game went on as, as it went. Uh, such games you can lose at the end because when you get into the last 10 minutes, it becomes very dangerous and uh, certain pressure comes at you. So uh, the, the good thing about, the positive thing about that game is the clean sheet. It's the second second away game, you know, which we had in these qualifiers with a clean sheet, which is... Uh, telling about stability in defensive shape. We didn't allow much to Afghanistan apart from one chance when they got in behind our defenders. But Gurpet stood up there and uh, cut the angle to the player so he couldn't take the clean shot. He tried to pass the ball and that's why they missed the chance. But uh, obviously, I cannot help our players there in the final third. It's up to them. It's up to their individual quality to show at certain situations what they can do, how they can take good decisions and execute the, the positions they are in. You know, mostly uh, us coaches uh, uh, say that we can help players and organize their game in first and the second third. In the final third, when it comes there, it's up to them. Show the goal, you know. And it's not easy for them because mostly, as you can see, they're not playing these positions uh, uh, crucial positions in their club, apart from Sunil this season, and no one else is there. Chante is recently playing as a, as a central forward player, you know. Vikram is playing on the left wing, entering from that position inside. Manvir is on the right wing, or right fullback in the, in the system three at the back. So, in three days' time, four days' time, to, to make that change, and that's impossible. It's impossible. We're going to put our best striking force here tomorrow. We're going to try to find a way, try to change few things. We're going to need some fresh legs also there. We, our intention is to start controlling the game from the very first minute with the various new technical players on the team, I would say that. So let's, let's hope it will work. Uh, good afternoon, coach. Uh, did the way Afghanistan played in the last game, uh, did it surprise you or did it? Uh, did you predict the way they played? No, it didn't surprise me, to be honest. We were, we were expecting that and you could clearly see that we were also cautious about that, what they can do to us. You need to understand that uh, in their squad they have only three or four players which are still in Afghanistan league involved. All the rest of them are playing in Europe. And you can clearly notice kind of a difference in the basic skill movement in the in the game understanding and the passing quality, you know. So that's what, what uh, good leagues and good competitions provide to you, you know. And I'm not saying that because I know that from yesterday. I know that from a long time. I would love to see our players going abroad and enjoying uh, more competitive football. Some of them are still young. They should have that hunger. Uh, to, to go abroad and to challenge themselves, you know. Uh, my next question is for Sunil. Uh, good afternoon, happy holiday. How uh, impressed were you with the team's performance in the last game and uh, how, how would you rate Afghanistan's performance the way they played? I'm not sure whether I can use the word impressed. Uh, yeah, I think, the, I think in the first half there were a few chances that we should have taken. 
no matter who you're playing, when you go away and play, the chances don't, uh, the chances come seldom. I think uh, as the game progressed, the game became more open, we were a little bit more desperate. When you start a game dominant and you miss chances, you generally have an idea that you know, you're chasing the game because you want to win, because you know you had the chances. So, you know, the game opened up, we, the, the, the gaps between us a little, increased a little bit and then after 17 minutes, it was anyone's game. We got a corner, so Vashish could have scored that goal. They had a chance, they could have scored the goal. So it became, I mean, you attack, us attack, you attack. And that's something that he doesn't like, we don't like to play like that. Uh, but now we are at home, we'll be more stable. Uh, and, and yeah, and after probably tomorrow's game, I can talk about what impressed me. Hello coach, uh, hello sir, sir. First of all, happy birthday to you and your families. Uh, my question is a two-part question. First of all, I think this to be sir. Uh, we are on uh, four points right now. If we win against Afghanistan <coughs> tomorrow, we'll be on seven points. Which means that we are on course to qualify for the third round of the FIFA World Cup, which will be historic for India. Uh, my question is that lately we have observed that we are not able to keep the ball in the midfield. Uh, we are losing quite a few position in the midfield. That leads to opposition team coming back from the central areas. Are we looking to work on our rest defense more? Are we looking to be more compact off the ball? Or like you said, that we would want to control the ball right from the first minute. So basically, what are we working on in the central part of the pitch? As I told you earlier, we are looking for uh, players which will provide us this stability in ball control and passing control. You know, we, we expected that, but still you need to understand we have Anwar and Jigs are still not at their best and they are two very important players for us in this ball control uh, situation. So, uh, Suresh is still not at his top. He's suffering some some, uh, some things in his form recently. Also, we are not getting too much from our fullbacks in uh, latest games, which we were used to, you know. So, we need more confidence there. We need more initiative. And, I always say to my players, uh, I will never blame you if you make a mistake. But I will get so angry if you don't try. You know. And at the moment we are stuck somewhere in, in not trying enough. Not trying enough. That's what, what hurts me as a coach to see. You know. I want them to try. I want them to make mistakes. And to run back and chase the, the ball again. So now we are looking, as I told you, for, for more players in the middle who can provide us this stability in the game. We were, I would say, taking certain risk there in the last game with the formation we had. Obviously, uh, uh, there were certain situations during the game when uh, Afghanistan went through our middle line without any problem, which is not good. You know, We need to bring that stability back, so hopefully it, it will happen too. Thank you, sir. Uh, Suni, so sir, next question is to you. Uh, knowing that in our team we have got a couple of youngsters coming in, how important will be the role of youngsters in tomorrow's game for playing uh, outside you? Uh, knowing that you are the uh, captain, of the, uh, captain of the team, how big of an impact will the youth be playing in tomorrow's game in the upcoming future as well? Yeah, I mean, them being young doesn't work that well. Them being good does. So whoever has come to the camp is because the new ones are coming because they have done something with the clubs and they have shown some supportation to the coach. What their age is has no bearing at all what the game is going to be. And he doesn't care, we don't care at the camp too much. Apart from some silly jokes that they put on me, we don't talk about age. Whoever is good is going to start. You will not care if 40 year old or 20 year old is playing, you want in India to win, so will I, so, so, so will anyone. So I think that doesn't matter too much. I said that all the young ones who have come, they are, all have come because they have potential, that, that's what they've shown him. And yeah, they're just fighting for their places right now in the first level. And whoever is a chance, we try and give their best, especially playing at home. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, happy only to both of you, sir. Uh, so my question is to Sweet, sir. sir. Uh, you will be playing in front of a home crowd this time. And how important is it for you as a player, as a team, to feel that atmosphere? And was it something that was missing the last time round? To be very honest, we weren't missing the home crowd even in Afghanistan. I mean, playing Afghanistan in our, it was unbelievable. There were, I'm not sure what the numbers were, it was, the stadium was small, comparatively, and 70% of the stadium was full with Indian supporters. So I don't think we Indians, I mean, when we play football, no matter where we go, 
we have a joke flying around that even if you go to the moon, we'll find something in there. We don't, uh, uh, there, there, there isn't many places, there aren't many places where we have been and we haven't got support, but yes, it is not going to be the same when you play at our own country, we know the atmosphere, we know people are going to come, it's different. Uh, and we really want to thrive on that, on that vibe, because I mean, after zero zero in Afghanistan, I can tell you that all the boys want to, want to get back. We had a small episode in the dressing room where he wasn't happy, so all the boys are, are itching to, to put it right on the next time. The coach mentioned earlier that when the results don't go your way, there's a lot of negativity which comes through. Uh, but he says that it doesn't affect him. But as players, you and how do you help in dealing with the with such reaction coming through? Do the players read it? Like you know, how do they feel about it? I try to tell them not to read it because few of them you can see get affected. I've been abused a million number of times from thick skin. But uh, yeah, yeah, because of the popularity of social media, you cannot uh, ignore the fact that people speak and they have opinions. But tell the guys to, to just, just calm down. People are watching a game, people are putting their time on you, they will have opinions and now the opinions can reach directly to your ears and your phone. That's all right. Don't read too much about it. You always should give your best in the ground. Some days you're going to be some days you're going to lose, some days you're going to win, some days you're going to be bad also. Just just accept it and, and, and improve. Not because people are speaking it, but because you need to. You need to for the country there is no other excuses. Not every day is going to be good, but don't pay too much attention on the opinions because it's not going to help you. Not that it doesn't matter, but it never helps. Even if somebody's saying good things about you or bad things, it never helps you on the pitch. That's the way probably, that's why he, I'm pretty sure even he has been abused a lot in his career. So that's, that's why we are like that. I'm pretty sure it's a journey they will learn. I started loving you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't say I love it, but I, I, I'm, I'm indifferent now because I know it doesn't help me. I, I respect the opinions, good or bad, but the youngsters, I always tell them, stay away because it's, it's everywhere now. You open your phone and everywhere there are multiple ways of conveying what you felt after the game from the fans to the players so yeah the fans can keep doing that you, you're putting your energy and, and watching our games do it don't abuse but say anything you really want and the players will learn so I'm coach this is Amitabh uh, considering that uh, what you said so far uh, about the game's progress over the years 2023, 2023 was quite uh, positive for us. Uh, a lot of things happened, and uh, you expected that this will uh, transition into 20, uh, 2024 quite well. So, do you think it is going uh, as you expected, or there are certain things that is not coming up to the mark, or the eco ecosystem is not helping? What do you think? I will. I will take you back seven eight months. After we won the tournament, three nation here in the continental, you know, and SAF, and everybody was kind of jumping into euphoria. I was saying, calm down, calm down. Let's prepare for what's coming at us. And you will remember at that time that my situation with an AIFF was in a position that. I would be extended my contract after the Asian Cup. And I didn't accept in that position. I wanted immediate discussion with the AIFF officials, knowing very well what's going to happen. And not putting myself in a position to, get to discuss it after the Asian Cup. Because being aware that we're not going to be able to get enough time for the Cup, I was ready to accept suffering, another process, defeats, abuse, to get to June and to prove everyone once again where we're gonna go in the next phase of our work. So if I need to remind everyone every time what I was saying, that whatever I was saying was the truth, was a realistic picture of where we stand and where we can go, how far we can reach and how much time we need for that, then I will keep repeating, I don't have a problem with that, you know. So. I extended my contract. My contract is until 26. It's very clear. So whoever feels better abusing me or players or the team because of the result or actual situation, 
if he feels better about it, then I'm happy. But we know very well where we go and how we're going to get there. And if it takes suffering tomorrow also, we're going to accept it because it's coming from the God. That at the end of every suffering comes the light out of the tunnel, which will bring happiness. And we are well aware that we are learning through each defeat, through each bad performance, poor performance, or good performance. We are a team which is in creating phase. We are a team which is seeing some players playing their last days and some new boys entering the team. We have a core base of the team which is 15, 16 players, and there is 10 positions which will be changing based on performance level. And as I said, my very first day at the PC when I had with Indian media, Indian people, I said, if we are not all together in this, then we are not helping each other. Simple as that. So once again, I'm asking for unity. I'm asking for understanding and the patience. We entered the second phase of our work. I said, never mind the contract. I'm telling you now in front of you, if I don't take India to the third round, I will leave with my pride, with honor, on everything which was done here in the five years of work, and I will leave my position to someone else. But if we qualify, come on, let's understand there is plenty of work to be done yet. Ten more games to enjoy, five games at home. You can imagine what kind of excitement that can bring to us. So thank you very much and happy birthday. Coach, uh, just coming back to you, the unit that you have right now, you brought in a lot of young players. <coughs> Intensity is at the core of the way you play. You have quick players, runners. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that you showed that, the team showed that intensity during the Intercontinental and South Cup last year. But we won't be having that big camp always, right? There's only one FIFA window that allows you to have that kind of camp. Otherwise, it's largely going to be a few sessions and then... Is there really only the camp the reason for the... Because I'm very surprised because the intensity, I felt maybe probably isn't the same. I saw even the King's Cup, it was very high, even the result didn't come. Is, is it just the camp or is there some specifics or is it like sort of get tired no, with no, the... The other, the other thing is which is not helping the ISL coaches, same way it doesn't help me, you know, because the... the the way the competition is going on is not helping the, the coaches in ISL. They don't have time to work with the players. They just travel and play games. So there is no even time for a generation sessions, you know. So these players are uh, exposed to extreme risk of injuries, which we witness every day. And uh, if you don't have enough time to work with the players which are in need of work to improve their abilities, their individual skills, their basic skills which were, which were missed in developmental programs, then we have a huge problem. So it, uh, that's, the, that's the point I, I want to discuss with everyone and we need to change it because uh, the coaches, they need to be awarded enough time to prepare the teams for ISL season because uh, six weeks of time is needed there, but not six weeks where you're going to not have enough time for training sessions or not have a good facilities for training sessions or just disrupt the, the training process with a certain certain competition which is not helping the team too much you know so these are the things which which uh, all the stakeholders need to discuss but it, it's not time now to speak about that these problems are, are deep and they need to be discussed uh, amongst everyone to help indian football in the future that's how i see it uh, I will remind you once again, in my four-year tenure we had three long camps. One was five years ago, right here, prior to games against Oman and Qatar. You remember how well team played at that time. The second long camp was prior to AFC Asian Cup qualifiers in Kolkata. The team was flying. Three games, three wins, eight, one goal difference. Third long camp was last year prior to these tournaments which we played brilliantly, even rotating the team every game, you could clearly see that there was no difference on the pitch, that the game intensity was there, that everybody knows exactly what he needs to do in each moment of the game. And then you say in the future, 
uh, I stayed here because promises are made for the future. And the promise is very simple, that everybody will sit down at the end of this season to make sure that the calendar for the future season is done in regard so everyone can be satisfied. We don't have disruption in for the next year with the Asian Games or anything in between, so the season calendar can be created in a way that the national team gets <coughs> seven extra days apart from five, which is given to us by FIFA window, to come to a 12 days come prior to each FIFA window. We have five FIFA windows during the year and that's it. That's what we are looking for. As you know, June is always there available to us to organize a longer camp for those players who perform well in ISL so we can see some players from I League also which we are monitoring and make sure that they start understanding what is what is the expectation when they reach the national team stage. Hello coach, uh, I'm here coach. So my question is, you are very focused about uh, grassroots development and uh, what uh, India could learn from European countries about grassroots development. And there are media reports that AIFF, AIFF has cut, uh, cost cutting the grassroots development by 20 crores. So do you have to make any comments on that? I would say on course of tomorrow's game, so let's not go, let's go, we'll not go further away. We can, we can have different discussion on a different day. Thank you. Coach, hi, Aditya this side. Uh, coach, uh, you have, uh, thankfully, you have a good roster of players. You have mentioned that in the past, but Sehel's injury has always led to some kind of uh, makeshift solution for the position. We have tried Vikram, Mahesh in the past. Uh, is that an area of concern going into this game? And any other injury update? Yes, of course. Injuries are always concerned, but uh, you cannot avoid them. What are we going to do? We need to think about those who are with us and who are available, not about those who are missing. We're going to think about them later on, you know, that's how we see it. We also have certain concern with some players uh, playing different positions from the positions they made sure they have in the national team, so which is not helping them. And in such circumstances, most of them are dropping their form a little bit, you know, so it's not helping also. But it is what it is, that's football life. Uh, coach, uh, I vividly remember four years ago, right here, you know, in a, during a media interaction, you mentioned the system and style of football that you wanted to implement in this part. Four years on, how much prepared do you think your side is with that system and style of play? Football is changing on a daily basis. Evolution is going on, it's happening, you know, new things, new methods, new playing styles new philosophy so we need to follow that simple as that you cannot decide you know this is my philosophy and that will keep going on forever no, we follow the trends we follow what's needed we follow our opponents obviously when when you play against lower rank opponents you will have more attacking style of play you will try to control the game and put as much pressure as possible when you play against far better teams then you need to organize your defensive shape in a way to not to get hurt too much. Are you happy with the progress your team has made? I am happy in certain way, but also frustrated in uh, on the other, you know. And frustration comes because of the things we mentioned earlier, you know, not having possibility of seeing clear improvement on all our players on a daily basis or yearly basis, let's say. That way, if, if I look back, then apart from being much more experienced now, you know, we, we cannot see clearly that there is a group of seven, eight players improving on individual class too much, you know. And that's because there is not too much time to work for them, neither for ISL coaches or for me. Do you have any further questions? Raise of hands? Yeah. Hi, my question is to both the coach and captain. Uh, the AFC Asian Cup was uh, forgettable, but what are the important learnings from that? And um, how uh, strategy-wise any changes after that? Thank you. Can you repeat the question? Uh, the Asia Cup 
what are the important learnings from that? Any silver lining, any new player discovered? Ticket redemption, get rid of all the issues. Any lessons that you have learned from that to change the approach? Giving away silly situations is causing us huge problems and in this aspect of the game we are still shaking I would say against these uh, much better teams. Uh, but then again I always try to take positives out of each defeat, out of each game. So. In the Asian Cup, we had uh, 10 days to prepare for Australia game, specifically for Australia game. So Uzbekistan game, we had three day preparation for Syria also, which was uh, much more difficult. And that's why we had that good shape against Australia. We looked, that was, I would say, defensively our, our best game. The, the learnings are huge always, you know, and the lesson is there. Still lots of work to be done to have higher aspirations. And we know the group was very tough, opponents very difficult, especially Uzbekistan, as I, as I expected, you know. Uzbekistan is a side who can beat anyone in Asia. It was really difficult to watch our boys not being uh, uh, driven away into very difficult position in a game control. We, we control the game well, but each mistake we made caused us conceding goals. You know, and that was that was sad to see. Others, other teams make mistake against us. You know, so we need to have this reaction same as good teams when when the mistakes happens on the opposite side to punish that. But that will come hopefully. We have some young players coming through now. We hope that they will rise their game and like Vikram now as you can see he started scoring some some nice goals in, in ISL but uh, more than that I'm happy with his hunger, I'm happy with his attitude, with his commitment and all the boys love him in the camp. So probably he will be the one who will uh, keep enjoying his game with the national team. We'll take one final question. So we were talking about mm -hmm. Vikram over here. Uh, we have seen him score a lot of goals mm -hmm. in Mumbai City, obviously. But uh, basically what I have observed is that he has been playing more on the wide areas and uh, has featured from there. Uh, in the last match against Afghanistan, he featured much more centrally because Shanti was playing on the left side. And uh, I just want to understand what's the best possible combination uh, along, alongside Suleyser and Chante and other strikers. We need to find that out. That's what I was We are working on that. As I told you, see, Chante is playing central in the club and Vikram is playing left. And I speak with my players. I ask them, where do you feel the best? What do you think? We love to share opinions, thoughts, you know, we love to discuss. The, the points and what's needed for the team because each one of them needs to understand that everyone needs to give everything to make team better, not to make themselves better, you know. So, and also tomorrow we're going to try to make it work so the team works and who will score at the end of the day if we score is not important, it's less important. But uh, just to remind you, you know, because it's not going to be easy for a week to start scoring goal at the international level. So be patient with him. Don't hunt him after two, three games if he doesn't score. It will come. It needs to come. Thank you, sir. And good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.